Welcome to On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I'm the author of the book that has inspired this series of videos, On This Day in Tudor History, as well as various others, including this one, Illustrated Kings and Queens of England, for example. So I'm here today to talk about the 17th of February. On this day in Tudor history, the 17th of February, 1547, Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, uncle of King Edward VI and brother of the late Queen, Jane Seymour, was made Duke of Somerset. Now Somerset had been made Lord Protector of the Realm and Governor of the King's Person on the 1st of February, 1547, meaning that he led England's government on behalf of his nephew, who was just nine years old at the time. Now, King Henry VIII had never meant for one man to be in control. Henry VIII's will had stipulated that while his son was in his minority, he was to be ruled as regards marriage and all affairs by the aforesaid councillors. Now, these councillors were 16 men that he'd named in his will as executors of his will, and they were to form a Regency Council along with 12 other advisers. Henry VIII also instructed that none of them shall do anything appointed by this will alone, but only with the written consent of the majority. The plan was that the council would rule collectively, with every member having equal power and rights. However, the will also allowed the executors of the will to grant themselves lands and honours. So Edward Seymour took advantage of this and made himself Duke of Somerset and Lord Protector of his nephew's council, with the agreement of 13 out of the 16 executors and with the young king's assent. Somerset then went on to rule by proclamation, making all of the decisions himself. He also acted as High Steward of England for Edward's coronation on the 20th of February 1547, and he was Lord Treasurer and Earl Marshal. Historian Barrett L. Beer notes that these positions gave Hartford more power than had been exercised by any subject since the beginning of the Tudor era. Somerset even used the royal we. Of course, his time in power was to last only two years. From the 11th of October 1549, the Duke of Somerset was arrested and brought in front of his nephew, King Edward VI. Now, King Edward VI summarised the charges against his uncle as ambition, vainglory, entering into rash wars in my youth, negligent looking on New Haven, enriching himself of my treasure, following his own opinion, and doing all by his own authority, etc. Somerset's downfall was the result of widespread social unrest in England, such as the Prayer Book Rebellion in the South West and Kett's Rebellion in East Anglia in 1549, something for which the rest of the council blamed him. After his arrest, Somerset was succeeded as the leader of King Edward VI's council by John Dudley, the Earl of Warwick. Dudley went on to become Duke of Northumberland. Although Somerset was later released and restored to a place on the council, he was eventually executed on the 22nd of January 1552 after plotting to overthrow John Dudley. Dudley led Edward VI's government as Lord President of the Council rather than Lord Protector until King Edward VI's death in July 1553. Now let's finish today with some facts about Somerset. Okay, Somerset was the eldest son of Sir John Seymour and Marjorie Wentworth of Wolf Hall in Wiltshire. He was one of ten children born to the couple. Somerset was married twice to Catherine Fillol and to Anne Stanhope. Now, there's a bit of scandal surrounding Catherine Fillol, but the scandal doesn't really come out. These scandalous stories don't really come out until the 17th century. It was said that Somerset repudiated Catherine due to her adultery 
and that the paternity of the couple's first son was in question. It was even suggested that Catherine had slept with Somerset's father, Sir John, and that perhaps their first son was fathered by him. However, there is no evidence to back up these stories. Now, Somerset's rise at the English court started in around 1531, but it was in 1531 that he was appointed as an esquire of the body to King Henry VIII. He became a gentleman of the Privy Chamber in March 1536. And a few weeks later, Somerset and his wife Anne were given apartments at Greenwich Palace. His sister Jane Seymour went to live with them, and a secret passage to the apartment meant that King Henry VIII was able to visit these apartments without being noticed obviously, so that he could visit his paramour, Jane Seymour. Somerset was created Viscount Beecham in June 1536, following the marriage of his sister Jane to the King. He was then made Earl of Hertford in 1537. In October 1537, he carried the four-year-old Elizabeth, daughter of King Henry VIII, at the baptism of his nephew and her half-brother, Edward. In 1541, he was elected as a Knight of the Garter. His offices in King Henry VIII's reign included Warden of the Scottish Marches, Lord High Admiral, Lord Great Chamberlain, Lieutenant General in the North and Lieutenant of the Kingdom. He appears to have been a good soldier. He had two sons with his first wife, Catherine, John and Edward, and then ten children with his second wife, Anne, including Edward Seymour, first Earl of Hertford, Lady Anne Seymour, Lady Margaret Seymour, and Lady Jane Seymour. He and his brother, Thomas Seymour, Baron Sudley, fell out after Thomas's marriage to Catherine Parr, the Dowager Queen, who Thomas felt that Somerset and his wife, Anne, did not treat with due respect. Thomas also didn't like Somerset's closeness to their nephew, the King. Thomas Seymour was executed while Somerset was Lord Protector in March 1549, after being found guilty of treason by act of attainder. And did you know that our present Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, is descended from Somerset through his great-grandson, William Seymour, Duke of Somerset. So there you go. On this day in Tudor history, Edward Seymour, brother of Queen Jane Seymour and uncle of King Edward VI, was created Duke of Somerset. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow with another On This Day in Tudor History. Make sure you subscribe with the button that's just around there, I think. And you can also hit the bell to be notified of new videos. I'm really enjoying reading your comments and answering your questions. So thank you very much for those. And thank you for viewing my videos. Bye bye.